Hello everyone, it's Colin with the Knox County Fire Bureau, and in today's Go See It, we're here at the Knox County 911 Center. We're going to meet with Miss Tanya Coombe, who's going to give us a tour of the facility and give us a behind the scenes look at how you calling 911 gets handled here in Knox County. So let's go see what we can learn. Good morning. My name is Tanya Coombe, and we're here at the Knox County 911 Emergency Communications Center. That would be Knox County 911. Okay, we're going to enter the 911 center. Obviously, as you come in, you have to be a little bit quiet because we don't want to pick up any background noises for our operators who are actually taking live calls. So come on in. So when you call 911, these employees in the middle are the ones that receive your call. This section is what we call call takers or our call processors. They take all of the information and they're providing it to the dispatchers that are on the other side of the room that we'll see in just a minute. So when you're calling, we need your location. That's the most important part that you can provide. We can send you all kinds of help, but if we don't know where you're at, we can't get them to you. So if you're calling from a regular landline phone, we get your location because that's provided by the telephone company. If you're calling from a cell phone, we get a GPS coordinate, and that is only guaranteed to be correct 95% of the time within 100 yards. So I have a hard time thinking about how far 100 yards is. 100 yards is a football field, so if you're standing at your house and you go a football field in any direction, there's probably a lot of houses there. So we have to make sure that you can provide us a location so that we know where to send your assistance to. So when you call 911, we will get your information here. Obviously, we're not showing you guys anything here today, but this is our phone system. So we do have an extra phone, but this is just for backup. This, when you call 911, this is where all of your information comes in. And when you call, your address will pop up here. Now, if you're calling from your neighbor's house because your house is on fire and you've left the house, then your neighbor's address is going to come up, but we're going to be able to pull that up and see exactly where your address is at. We, our call takers will put all of the information into the call, and they will keep you on the phone, and they will keep talking to you and gathering information, and they will send that over to the dispatchers so that the dispatchers can talk to the field unit. So just because when you call 911 and they keep asking you questions, doesn't mean that whoever's coming to your house isn't getting that information. It just means that you're talking to one person and the other person we have in here is talking to the field unit. That just streamlines the process and actually gets information to the responders faster. Okay, now we've moved down to the end of the room. Our call takers are to my left, so you've already seen what they do. Now, if you call for an ambulance, sometimes, most of the time, we're going to tell you to stay on the line. I'm going to let you speak with the ambulance dispatch. Well, what those dispatchers do is they're able to give you instructions over the phone, such as if there's someone choking or there's a cardiac arrest or even a childbirth. They can assist you with those instructions. A lot of times that can be very scary thinking that you're being transferred, but it is literally from this far to this far. So we're all located in this room together, and that provides us the opportunity to be able to share information not only on the radio, not only on the computer screen, but actually being able to speak with one another and give each other that, that information. In Knox County, we're all in one big room together. The only emergency services that's not dispatched out of this room would be THP, which is Tennessee Highway Patrol, or UTPD, which is University of Tennessee Police Department, and they handle all of the calls on campus. The section that I'm standing in now is Knox County Sheriff's Department dispatch. So if you live in the county and you call for an officer, these are the people that are going to dispatch that officer. As I said, now our call takers are going to be providing that information and they're going to be relaying it to the field units. Okay. We're going to walk name, and we're going to go to Rodney? Knoxville Police Department dispatch. Their area okay. is just what a is little bit bigger. Um, and the reason is they have a little, few more officers that are on the street at a time. So this section is the Knoxville Police Department dispatch. 
all of these dispatchers do the exact same thing. They're going to be able to take the information that our call takers are providing and relay it to the field units. They have multiple screens, and this is the same at each agency. Our dispatchers deal with six screens and, and a radio. They take any information that the field unit puts or gives them, and they put it into the computer system so that our call taker, if they're still on the line with you, they can tell you, hey, the officer has just pulled up, the officer needs you to step out. So they're providing a two-way communication for you. Our next section is the fire dispatch. And these dispatchers actually dispatch two agencies. Those two agencies are Knoxville Fire Department Dispatch and Carnes Fire Department Dispatch. So if you live in the county and you live in the Carnes Fire area, these are the same dispatchers that are going to send those fire units out. Or if you live in the city, they also dispatch Knoxville Fire Department Dispatch. Okay, the next section that we're going to visit is our AMR Dispatch and Rural Metro Fire Dispatch. They dispatch obviously Rural Metro Fire and all the ambulances for all of Knox County, but they are also responsible for dispatching Seymour Fire Department and the rescue squad that responds inside Knox County. Okay, next we're going to go visit our EOC, which is our Emergency Operations Center. What happens there is when we have a major event going on, we will have that staffed obviously today luckily there's not a whole lot of people in there but i want you guys to see what what it looks like and kind of how close that we are to the 911 center and how we share information so this is our emergency operations center or eoc and a lot of times you'll hear that on the news when they're talking about that we have a major event going on we also use this when we have UT football games. We'll have staff in here. So each one of these chairs would be filled with staff that would be decision makers that are able to be in the same room with each other and give information to one another and updates and make good decisions based on each other's information. Okay. Now we're gonna go into our kitchen break room area and this is where our, our employees go when they take their break or when they take their lunch or if they just need a few minutes to just kind of decompress. So come on in and let, let's visit in here. We actually just had this remodeled and had that had this redone. So we're very excited over, over this space. But since our employees work 12 hour shifts, as do the AMR and Rural Metro dispatchers, we want them to have a place that they can come and sit uh, bring their lunch from home, go out and grab their lunch, or they can actually come in and cook. And there's a lot of times that we will cook a full meal here. Like I said, they're here for 12 hours a day, so we become like family. And sometimes it's kind of nice to be able to have family meals in a warm, comforting environment. 